Um, this is a video in geometry. It's about uh, constructions. So I'm going to write constructions. And it's relating to section 1-7 in your book. Now, by constructions, we mean constructions with two tools. One is a straight edge, so you could use a ruler or anything that's straight. We're actually not going to measure anything with the ruler. Uh, so don't measure anything with the ruler. I happen to be using a ruler here. But anything straight is fine. And then we're going to be using a compass. So there's a compass. And um, you know this is an OK compass. Um, I don't like the ball bearing ones. Um, I like ones that you could put a regular pencil in, like this one, though. And um, so we're going to do it. And these are the types of things ancient Greeks sort of learned how to do is with just a, these two tools, a compass and a straight edge. So the first one is like uh, very simple. And that is, I'm going to have a line segment. And so I have a line segment here of some length, and I'm going to say it's, uh, my segment is A, B, and I'm going to draw a congruent line segment. Okay, well this is really easy because all I need to do is draw another segment. I'm going to draw it longer than that. Okay, and then I'm going to you know, this uh, that's a segment, that's fine. I'm going to take this and I'm going to use this, I'll try to get out of the way there, to measure this, I'm going to go here to here and effectively, you see I put my pointy in, uh, I'm going to go here, I put my pointy in here and the other end there and now I basically have measured the length of AB. See how I do that? This is called a little arc here where I make a little part of a circle. Uh, but that's the distance AB. So now I'm going to take my compass at that same setting without moving it, put it at the end point of this segment, or in the book they made it a ray, but I put it there, and I'm going to draw a line. Now I'm going to label this CD, and voila, I can say that uh, segment AB is congruent to segment CD. Or I can say the length of this AB is the same as the length of this CD. I have no idea what the length is in like centimeters or inches or anything like that, but I don't need to. I know that these two are equal, and that's why I've constructed. So this is a uh, construction of a congruent line segment. Okay, the next construction we're going to do is a congruent angle. So, first of all, I'm just going to make some angle. It's best to have sort of a medium-sized congruent or medium-sized um, acute angle. By medium sized I mean on your paper. You know, make a decent sized thing. So I'll label this as we're going to do a uh, congruent angle. Okay. And so what I want to do is make an angle that's exactly that size. It doesn't matter, you know, what where it is on the page or how it's turned or anything, but it matters that it's exactly the same, uh, the measure of the angle is exactly the same. So here I'm going to draw a uh, ray. I might, uh, so I got a ray. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my compass at a sort of a, uh, make it a little shorter than that. I'm going to make it here, and I'm going to stick it at the vertex here. And then I'm going to 
make an arc across here and here. The book actually labels the vertex A, and then once we make that arc, the point there and the point there, we're going to label B and C. Okay? So, so far, I know this much. And I keep the compass setting the same. Whatever I use to make that arc, I'm going to keep the same. Well, now I'm going to go down here, and the end point here, I'm going to make that arc again. Make a big, nice arc. I'll make it a little darker since that's hard for you to see in the video there. So I make an arc. So you can see that arc there. By the way, all these lines that we're putting in here, these arcs and so forth, everything I'm putting in in pencil here, you leave those lines in. They're called construction lines, and I need to see them. Um, in doing constructions, that sort of proves what you have done. In the book, they actually labeled this endpoint S. And um, now what we're going to do is we've made this arc. Again, it's the same as this distance. And I went here, and I went here, and we made that arc. Now what we're going to do is take this compass and use it to measure BC. So I'm going to dig in here at C with the point of my compass. And then I want to move the lead of the pencil until it just contacts with B. And I can take that there. And so it just matches there. I'm going to try to get that out of the way there. So it just matches, okay? So I know this length AB now. It's from there to there. I'm going to try to get my big fat fingers out of the way again. And it's from there to there, A to B, A to B, okay? And so that's A to B. And so now I know this distance here. I'm going to take this. I'm going to put this where the arc and the ray intersect. And now I'm going to draw another line. I'm going to draw another line, another arc. I draw another arc here. Well, these two arcs intersect right there. From the point of the end of my ray here, to where those arcs intersect, they intersect at a point, right? I'm going to draw a line. Actually, a ray. I'm going to draw a ray. And there's my ray. And, voila, I have created an angle that is identical to a, a, or BAC, angle BAC. Um, in the book, they label this uh, R and this T. So um, we can say that angle B, A, C, and remember the vertex needs to be in the middle, is congruent to angle T, S, R. I'm sorry. T, S, R. R. TRS was a type of computer that stood for Tandy Radio Shack. So there was a TRS-80 Model 100, for example. Or maybe it was the Model 1. Well, there was a Model 100, too. Okay, so those are congruent angles. So we know the angle BAC is congruent to TSR, which means the measure, if I measured this in degrees, which I could do with the protractor, is going to be the same as the measure of this in degrees. And you probably want to, when you do your own, you probably want to check that with the protractor. You can go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm going to assume I'm right here, though. Okay, the next one we're going to do is do what we call a uh, perpendicular bisector. So let me get a new page here. And this is, uh, I'll label it here, perpendicular bisector. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a segment. There's a segment. Make it, you know, reasonably big. And I have a segment. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it exactly in half. 
So it's right at the center. I don't know where that is, but you know, somewhere in there is the center. So that one segment is exactly the same as the other segment. I'm going to cut this segment right in half. As a matter of fact, the line that I'm cutting in half with is going to be perpendicular to this segment. Okay? So let's do it. What you want to do in, you know, books usually start labeling these things. So I'll label this point A and B. You don't need to make a big dot there. Sometimes I put a little dot so you can see it, but, you know, the, the, a line ends in a, in a uh, point. So I have segment AB there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my compass, I'm going to open it up a little bigger than half. Okay? You know, significantly big, bigger than half. Okay? Not huge, but bigger than half. That's obviously bigger than half. Okay? So, and then what I'm going to do, I like to get nice giant ones here. So I'm going to go here and draw a big giant arc there. Uh, you can't see that very well. I'm going to draw it bigger there. Okay, I think you can see that arc. Okay? With the exact same compass setting, don't move the compass setting, I'm going to go to B and then make a big giant arc like that. Well, it's a little light for you, but I can see it fine. Here it intersects at a point. And here it intersects at a point. Okay? Well, where those two points intersect, I'm going to take my straight edge, or where those two arcs intersect, creating two points, I'm going to draw a line through those two points. So here I am, I line that up carefully, and I'm going to draw a line through there. I have now created this line here bisects AB and it's perpendicular to AB. So, hence the name perpendicular bisector. If you were to take a ruler and measure this, oh, I might as well do that. Um, this is about 4.9 uh, centimeters and this one is 4.9 centimeters. Exactly, that's amazing. And I did that without using a ruler at all. I used the straight edge part of the ruler without using the measurement at all. And if I were to take a protractor in the interest of time, I won't. This is exactly 90 degrees. This is also 90 degrees because this is uh, a straight angle and these two are adjacent. This is also 90 degrees because it's opposite this there. Uh, vertical angles, and this is 90 degrees also. Okay, so we have created a perpendicular bisector. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to construct an angle bisector. And I think this will be our last construction for now. And so this is an angle bisector. Well, you probably have guessed is what we're going to do is we're going to take an angle and we're going to cut it in two. To buy, like bicycle means, you know, to, uh, means two, and sect means to cut. Okay, if you dissect something in biology class, you're, you know, cutting. Okay, and buy here means two. So there's the angle. I would, when you do this on your own, I would take a um, reasonably sized um, acute angle. It doesn't have to be, but that will make it easy enough. And you're going to um, bisect it, meaning cut this in two. In other words, I'm going to put another ray through here that will make this exactly which will make this ex uh, angle here and the angle here exactly the same. Okay, and I'm going to do it just with a compass and straight edge. So I have drawn this. What I'm going to do is 
take my compass and draw an arc that intersects these two rays. Okay? And um, the book labels these, so I will label these. They label them A, B, C, because these points, you know, those intersection created points there. Again, I'm sorry, that's, let me turn the light on here, see if you can see that better. No, that's actually worse. Um, so you see where the arc is. I'm going to draw that a little darker so you can see it better. So you can see that arc there. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the same compass setting. And what I'm going to do is put this at B and draw an arc out here. So you should be able to see that. And then at C, same compass setting, draw an arc out here. These two arcs intersect at a point which we will call X, okay? You don't really need to put that point there, but for to show you here, I will do it. Now, I'm going to take my straight edge, and I'm going to draw a ray from A through X. So here's a ray from A through X. Uh, sorry, I, we're going to ignore that part there. Um, and if I were to measure this, uh, well, I have a thing here, um, a protractor. And I'm going to measure this and quickly measure it. I don't like the ones with little holes, but that's okay. This is 41, 2, 3. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't want to measure that. I wanted to measure this. This is um, about 21, 21 and a little bit more. And this one is... Um, this one is about 21 and a half. So I did a pretty good job of bisecting this so that angle XAC is congruent to angle BAX. So I'll write that down. Angle BAX is congruent to angle angle X A C uh, X A C there you go um, and so that's an angle bisector so those are the bisector or those are the constructions uh, that you need in section 1 8 and with that I will go ahead and end this uh, video